Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Cruncher tutorial series. I'm CJ and today I'm going to walk you through the advanced options tab. This is where you're going to be spending a lot of time inside of Fantasy Cruncher once you get used to the product. So here we have first of all save general settings which is the most important button you can have because once you've got your settings set for a sport then you can just load them every single day. You don't have to fear going about and resetting them every single day. Unique players per lineup. So this is basically how many players different do you want in each lineup. So for example, if you have one, that means there will be a, a minimum of one player different per lineup you build. Sometimes that's helpful if you want a really narrow, concise player pool. If you're looking to get more and more players, maybe you want to try two or three unique players. And it also depends on your slate size and whatnot. But we have that available all the way up to eight unique players, which I've never seen anyone use. But you realistically are probably going to be sitting between one, two, and three unique players. Next, you got the team salary boxes. Obviously, the minimum salary, you want to throw in a big number in there just to avoid as you add some randomness getting some really bad teams. Also, the max is really helpful if you're playing a showdown slate, for example, and you want to avoid building teams with the with $100 or $0 left to avoid those duplicate teams. You can plug in that in right here in the max. Next, we've got the uh, position tabs here. This will be a little bit different for each sport, but you could basically the principle is the same. If there's different positions you don't want to be available in your utility or your forward or guard slots, you can exclude them or include them here. Next, we've got the uh, flex po position, obviously, which is more of the same. Then we've got the global exposure settings. Uh, so basically, if you want no players, owned over 80% of teams, you'll just go ahead and plug 80% in here, hit change all players, and as you can see, everyone has an exposure cap of 80. Now this will be universal, so be careful here. If you customize some projections and then you come back in here and put a cap on, it will change the cap of everyone. Next, the question is, do you want to calculate the exposure caps after each lineup is created or based on the number of lineups requested? This basically will happen is what will happen if you, it creates an error. If you create an error after the, the second lineup because you don't have enough exposure in your exposure cap, it will stop after two lineups if it can't break the rules. But if it's on based on the number of lineups requested and you have 100 lineups and it can build 80 successfully, it will go ahead and build all 80 successfully and then tell you it can't build anymore. I normally do it based on the number of lineups requested, but if you are building hundreds and hundreds of lineups and you want to find out if you don't have big enough exposure caps, the top one's the way to go. Uh, randomness is going to look a little bit different based on if you have Fantasy Cruncher Premium or if you have Fantasy Cruncher Pro. If you have Premium, it will look like this. You can turn on and off randomness like this. Normally, if for uh, Fantasy Cruncher Premium, you don't want to have too much randomness in there because it doesn't really take into account standard deviations and all that stuff. If you're looking for a huge randomness tutorial, we have them available here on the YouTube page, so be able to check that out. If you have Fantasy Cruncher Pro, this will be a basically a drop down between two options. One will be classic randomness and one will be normalized randomness. Click on that normalized randomness, that's the one you want to be using. Next, minimum projected included in the calculations. So this will basically means that you don't want to include any players below a certain projection. Now it will always exclude players below this projection. So let's say for example you have a player projected at 17.9 and you put 18 in there and you have randomness in there. It will exclude them every single time. So be careful here. What You want this to be the floor. Basically, you want this to get rid of all those bad plays that don't show up in your team. It, for me, it depends on the size of the slate or, or the sport I'm playing, but I normally try to get it up to 12 for basketball. For football, it's probably closer to 6, just to get rid of all those outliers that maybe I didn't manually delete one by one, or maybe a guy's projection changes and he'll sneak into teams if I'm not paying attention. And again, obviously after that, the most important thing you can do is hit that save settings button and then load settings. If you've done some things and you want to change it, you can hit that restore default settings at any time. That's it for the general section. As you can see, we have a bunch of other tabs to go through. Position stacks, team stacks, groups, and the my data tab, which I feel like is the wild, wild west of the tabs. It's the tab that people always ask me the most about and they don't know all the power of it. So we'll definitely make sure we cover the My Data tab. But for now, we'll see you next time.